Okay, critics of the former president's new lawsuit predict failure. They're calling it nothing more than a publicity stunt, but not everyone's convinced. Some argue it actually has the potential to wind up being a landmark case. Does the reality lie somewhere in between? We've got a top-notch legal eagle to weigh in here. Former Deputy Assistant Attorney General John Yu, and we are waiting on your partner in crime for this. Uh, we're having some technical difficulties with Harry, but I think we'll get him. So, John, start us off here. I want to uh, play a little bit of something that President Trump had to say today about these class action lawsuits. It will be a pivotal battle in the defense of the First Amendment. And in the end, I am confident that we will achieve a historic victory for American freedom. Someone who's not confident of that victory for President Trump is one of his biggest critics, a law professor, Lawrence Tribe. He tweets this out. He says, Trump has the First Amendment argument backwards. Facebook and Twitter themselves have a First Amendment right to decide what speech their platforms amplify, a right that includes excluding speakers who incite violence, as Trump has done. If I were on the receiving end of this obviously bogus lawsuit, I'd yawn, then I'd yawn again. The big argument being that these aren't the government. The First Amendment applies to the government, not private companies. What do you think, John? I don't know why President Trump wants to be back in the Supreme Court again. It hasn't been the happy place for him. But it would be ironic because in the past he's gone there to fight for the powers of the presidency, to defend himself from attacks from Congress. This time he might go there to defend the free speech rights of all Americans. And the reason I say that is because, yes, under current law, it might be the case that Facebook, Google, and Twitter are private companies. And as the Supreme Court has reminded us just this month, if you're a private property owner, you have the right to exclude whoever you want from your property. And so if that's the case, Facebook, Twitter, and Google can keep people off their networks, just like you and I can keep any stranger or any person off our property. But it could be different if we analogize these new networks to railroads, to airlines, to what we call mm -hmm. common carriers, people who aren't allowed to discriminate because they have such enormous monopoly power they play such an important role in the public interest that the Constitution does allow the government to require that they're open to everybody. All right, I think Carrie Lippman is with us as well, uh, joining the uh, conversation now. I want to read something from uh, Alan Dershowitz, also another STEAMS law professor. Now, he has filed an affidavit with this lawsuit as an expert witness. So he says, this is a very, very important lawsuit. What's going on with high tech is unacceptable. It's inconsistent with the spirit of free speech that underlines our First Amendment. Um, so, Harry, there are those, and he's not alone. There are other law professors and experts I saw today who are saying, listen, it's a narrow path, but this isn't um, a no chance for President Trump. It could actually be sort of groundbreaking if he has success with it. You know, the ground has been broken, though, already, Shannon, and very clearly, including by Justice Kavanaugh. I don't disagree with uh, John as a matter of, like, a law school seminar, which he and I teach. It's an interesting argument. Of course, Congress would have to go and take that step. Congress has done exactly the opposite. It has said that the uh, big tech companies, notwithstanding their power, are not um, uh, foreclosed from keeping people away who they think are violent, like President Trump. Under current law, it really is a non-starter. There would be hmm. possible th uh, theories like common carrier that John said, but they're not in the current landscape. So it's a dead loser, a sure loser. Hmm. It won't even make it to discovery because of that. Ooh. It's it, Although there are, are imaginative uh, uh, possibilities for a future world okay. in which Congress permits it. Okay, so Harry says this thing goes nowhere. It's dead on arrival. It doesn't even make it to step one in the court. This conversation is happening at the same time that we're seeing a number of uh, censorship censorship issues. We've we've heard these claims from people all over the place, primarily from uh, the conservatives, but we're hearing it from all different quarters tonight. And we're hearing things about a number of these groups that a year ago, if you talked about things like lab leak theory, and now it's fights over ivermectin and this kind of stuff. Um, you know, where where do we draw the line then, John, if these are public forums, if these are common carriers, about how much censorship these groups can have? And you think about the New York Post article on Hunter Biden that was killed and blocked. You couldn't retweet it right before the election. These are very powerful entities. That, that would be the theory, Shannon. I think you're right about whether to treat them as common carriers. This is actually an area where conserv some conservatives and some liberals agree. You also have probably run mm -hmm. stories about how the FTC and other agents in the Justice Department want to start 
putting these companies under serious antitrust scrutiny, also on the theory that become too big and powerful. If they become too big and powerful, then they can't discriminate and say, just like United Airlines couldn't say, no Republicans are allowed on the unfriendly skies. The same way you couldn't have Twitter then say, no Republicans can post on Twitter. Uh, that's the basic idea of the common carrier. Harry's quite right. You would need to see a lot of other pieces move in the agencies and Congress. But the lawsuit could be, Trump's lawsuit could bring so much attention to this, it could be the prompt to action. Yeah, the Wall Street Journal, very quickly, um, quotes a, another well-known professor who says this, it might be enough to show the government action needed for a viable First Amendment claim, but it's a big if. He says if the president, former president, could show that the platforms were coerced by government officials into blocking various speech. Harry, quick final word from you. Right. That is another theory. That's actually in the Trump lawsuit, but it just it just doesn't work. He's not going to be able to show that that somehow they are that the idea would be they are actually the government here because the government put a gun to their head. But it's not a gun. There's just a law out there that says they can keep mm. people off. OK, we obviously are going to track every twist and turn uh, the minute that the judge rules on any part of this. We will let folks know. Harry and John, thank you both very much. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.